Hello everyone, uh, this is another video tutorial for operating system architecture playlist and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about deadlock that can happen in threads and the source code will be written is is written in C and uh, I'm using project thread and uh, we're going to detect um, what is that uh, was deadlock and we're going to talk about what's deadlock and how we can detect it or which uh, tool we can use to detect it etc so uh, firstly um, we want I want to talk about thread uh, a thread as you know a thread uh, we have process and thread the difference between process and thread one of the biggest difference between process and thread is that processes uh, are using different memory space but uh, so and when you fork a process uh, you duplicate everything but in a different memory space but uh, when you use um, several threads in one process all of them access to the same uh, shared memory and so this is the biggest uh, import the biggest uh, difference between thread and uh, process in this case uh, we can say that threads can share can communicate between each other and this can have some uh, benefits and also some disadvantages and we will see what kind of disadvantage we can have uh, so in this tutorial uh, we have a source code and uh, you see that in the I have included pthread h header uh, for POSIX threads and then uh, I have created two uh, mutex and I have initialized them and uh, then I have a function or start routine where the thread is going to start work uh, executing and uh, it's a void pointer and the work I, I've called it worker and it takes as an argument a void pointer argument and then I cast it to int pointer and uh, then I check if the argument is one then uh, so I'm gonna see what is the argument here let's come here we see that there is a p thread create so uh, I have two uh, thread IDs p1 and p2 and I'm creating a thread by using p thread create function and it takes as a first argument the ID the address of the uh, pre thread ID uh, the second argument is null uh, because the second argument specifies the attributes thread attributes if you pass null it's gonna take default attributes and default values for the attributes and the third argument is the function where the um, where the thread is gonna begin executing and the last argument is the number I have passed one for the first thread and I have passed two for the second thread uh, the address of this uh, arguments and uh, one and two are these arguments I want to tell you and then uh, I have used piece red join piece red join is um, analog of uh, wait uh, in process uh, when you are using wait or wait pit uh, you make sure that you ensure that a parent process will not terminate until the child has terminated so the piece red join is the uh, same so we can say that parent process or parent thread actually is the main thread and main thread we can never know which thread is going to run first and main thread can uh, run first before uh, these two threads p1 and p2 so that uh, we can never see the execution of the p1 and p2 um, at this uh, function that's why we have to make sure that main thread uh, waits for the um, termination of the uh, two threads so we are using p thread join function to this for this purpose and p thread join takes the id of the first uh, um, thread and then second thread and we pass null because you are not gonna um, use uh, p thread exit for this function so that we are not gonna use anything this function is gonna return us null and we don't use this return value anywhere that's why i have passed null here as well and when we come to the function we see that okay uh, I have declared the integer pointer pointer to integer that is called value and I have casted uh, the argument to pointer to integer and I check if the value is equal to one if it is one it means that piece rate create or sorry piece rate create yes is gonna um, create uh, the first thread and if it is true it's going to create second thread and uh, what we see here 
we see actually here a deadlock. Why? Let me first explain what is deadlock. Deadlock is that is the situation where um, we have uh, let's say for now for this program we see that we are using two logs uh, let's say that for whatever reason you can use two logs around the shared resource right now i don't have any shared resource uh, here but i have two logs so um and uh, as i told you swiss can run runs uh, concurrently and uh we can never know runs concurrently and uh, so the first thread runs and the first thread first logs m1 and then logs m2 right and at the same time the second thread will run and it's gonna log m2 first and then it will try to log uh, m1 so uh, the, the the important part here is that if a thread has locked uh, has locked the mutex or has locked the shared uh, resource, it is the only thread who can unlock it. So it means that if the first thread uh, runs first and it's gonna run, it's gonna lock M1, unless it um, unlocks M1, no other thread can lock it again so other threads will be waiting so the first thread runs and then it locks m1 and uh, second thread is running at the same time and it's locking m2 first now uh, the second the first thread wants to lock m2 and the second thread wants to lock m1 but they are not unlocked f yet so in this case if uh, the first thread doesn't unlock M1, second thread can never and ever lock M1. And if the second thread doesn't unlock M2, first thread can never and ever lock M2. So they will be waiting for each other till the end of the time this situation is called deadlock and uh, how we can um, how we can detect it and how we can solve this problem i hope it's clear for you or maybe i can um, repeat it again so deadlock happens when two uh, threads simultaneously tries to access uh, the shared memory the, sorry the shared resource and this resource has been locked and let's say you have we have here p uh, thread one and we have here thread two because if it is one it, then it's going to be thread one and if it else so in case of two it's going to be thread two so the thread one has locked m1 and thread two is running at the same time or concurrently and has locked m2 now thread one wants to lock m2 but it hasn't been unlocked yet and thread two is also wanting to unlock uh, m1 or wants to acquire uh, a lock on m1 but it cannot because thread one hasn't unlocked m1 yet and uh, same likewise thread one cannot lock m2 because thread two hasn't unlocked m1 yet sorry m2 yet so if a thread locks uh, locks a shared resource it is the only one who can unlock and unless it unlocks the resource no other thread can access it and in this case in our case this thread is gonna wait uh, forever and this uh, position or this situation is called deadlock now let's see uh, now if we run this program and we, we are not gonna see anything uh, i mean any error any warning about what we have done here uh, as a mistake but if we go and help take a help from valgrind tool and valgrind is a tool for detecting memory leaks etc and there is a tool of valgrind which is called hellgrind and um, by the way, when I uh, compile it, I have uh, here, let me see, main deadlock executable. And uh, to check it 
with Val Hellgrind, tool of Valgrind. I'm writing Valgrind. By the way, you have to install Valgrind to use it. And then I specify tool Hellgrind. Hellgrind is a tool for detect detecting thread errors. And then the name of the executable, which is main deadlock in my case. And then here we are, we have the output. Now let's see what are the errors. So we have error summary, one error. So we see that um, this is the number of the process that uh, it's working on and the process ID is working on. And then we have the announcement, thread announcement, thread three was created. And then we see that log order this before this violated. So let's see what's written inside of this order sorry address so we see that address uh, this address holds m1 and so the second address which is this one is going to hold m2 because we don't have any other resource and this is interesting because a uh, valgrind hellgrind tool first it detects or sees the lock order and it sees that lock order has been uh, has been um, specified first M1, then M2. And then let's see the uh, message, Wh uh, what happened. Lock order has been violated. We see that observed order is acquisition of lock at this address first. But M1 should be uh, locked before M2. Why? Because because uh, we say that M1 being locked by thread 1 and then we say that M2 will be locked by thread 2 at the same time. And then uh, thread wants to access, the first thread wants to access M2, but it cannot because, um, uh, and the thread 2 is wants to access M1, but it cannot because they, are not been, they have not been unlocked yet. So to make sure that the lock order is um, has been uh, has not been violated or has been preserved, protected, we change it to M1 first, and then M2. So what happens here? Two threads run is running simultaneously or co concurrently, and the first thread is locking M1. The second thread is trying to lock M1, but it cannot because I told as I told you, M1 should first be unlocked. And the first thread unlocks M1. Right after that, uh, for second thread can now lock M1. And uh, same, uh, likewise, it's about M2. So uh, the second first thread is locking M2 and then it lo unlocks M2 and then uh, thread 2 can have access to M2 and but before it was like that in our case in the first in the original file and we see that the lock order has been violated so Valgrind um, suggests you to uh, protect the lock order so that you make sure that uh, when you run the program, thread 1 will acquire uh, M1 and thread 2 will wait until it unlocks the M1. But if you do it like that, if you stay uh, like that, so threads will unlock, sorry, threads will lock two different mutexes at the same time. And then they need to lock uh, each other's mutexes, let's say. But they cannot because they will wait for unlock and so they will wait forever. That's why it is better or not better, but it is best, it is correct to uh, make sure that the thread, one of the thread will wait until uh, the first one unlocks M1 and then it can lock it. Okay, in this case we say that thread 2 cannot uh, lock M1 until thread 1 unlocks it. Therefore, uh, Valgrind, Hellgrind also says that observe the order acquisition of lock at this one first, at this address first. So, uh, but and uh, M1 before M2 has been violated. So we see such a message on the um, output of the 
um, hell grind tool and therefore we better use to we better uh, pr preserve the order now let me run this one again and let me run it with hell grind now in this case we see that uh, zero errors from zero context and if we go to val grind tutorial and uh, here we see that uh, val grind can let me just go upstairs we see that uh, hell grind can detect three classes of errors which are discussed in detail etc so one of the errors is that potential deadlocks arising from lock ordering problems and if we go to this section we see that uh, imagine some shared resource R which for whatever reason is guarded by two logs L1 and L2 in our case it was L1 and L2 and then we see that suppose the thread acquires L1 then L2 and proceeds to access R the implication of this is that all threads in the program must acquire two logs in the order first uh, L1 then L2. Not doing so risks deadlock. How deadlock can happen? The deadlock could happen if two threads, golden T1 and T2, in our case it was P1 and P2, both want to access R. We don't have this R but we have lo uh, logs. So suppose T1 acquires L1 first, so in our case P1 acquires L1 first and T2 acquires L2 first and P2 acquires L2 first. I changed it but it was like that then T1 tries to acquire L2 then P1 tries to acquire M2 and T2 tries to acquire L1 and P2 tries to acquire M1 but those locks are both already held so T1 and T2 become deadlocked so they're gonna wait forever and um, and yes, so this is how the law can happen, and this is how you can read a Valgrind uh, tool of hell, tool Hellgrind. You can detect thread errors, and you can get help how to um, how to solve this error, how to solve this um, situation. I hope it's clear for you, and I'm gonna put the link of this. Uh, tutorial in the uh, comment section as well and if you have any question don't hesitate to ask thank you